if, if people are thinking about doing this, you give them my number, you have them call me. Our sales have already increased. Our notoriety in the community has already increased. I've seen a few of the videos you've done. Obviously, you shared them in that class. I got to tell you, dude, this one has just got to be the best you've done. You've done thousands of these rebrands over your career, right? And you are as world-renowned at this as anybody I've ever met. I mean, you are the who's who in this. Dude, this has got to be your best one. Like, I know it just has to be your best one. For those of you who are actively selling something and struggling to sell it, this is the way to go. I am so glad that you're here. And by the way, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, definitely subscribe below. You're going to love what we're about to tackle. Here's what we're going to cover. Recently, I sat down with the CEO of a 68-year-old nonprofit that we had just completed a rebrand for. During this discussion, we covered six key points. The first the origin of this 68 year old nonprofit. Because if you're gonna rebrand anything, you gotta know where it started. Two, they had a challenge. They had no way to succinctly convey what it was that they were providing others. We cover that and what we came up with. Three, why rebrand now? What was the impetus? Four, the rebrand breakthrough, the ultimate reframe that gave them an entirely new discussion. Five, how we unearthed the elephant in the room. And six, the steps to creating a killer video that actually reframed and told the world why and how it mattered. That's what we did. Join me as we talk about their journey through their rebrand. Check it out. When that video started, you could hear a pin drop. Yep. They were yep. glued. They were glued. And that, that was like, I was like, I'm, I'm just watching the room and I'm going, you really made it a special journey for us, not just for me, but for the board, uh, for Melanie, for the whole team. It was a, it was a special, unique journey that I never want to have to change names again. People are still talking about it in our community. Um, love it. Love it. People are talking about how they love the name, how they love the tagline, how they love the story, how they love all of it. Like it's just been the the outpour has been incredible. It's been incredible. Awesome. Feedback has been awesome. incredible. Recently, uh, I worked with Brian and the nonprofit that he heads up as the CEO. And they have been known for quite some time as Mark First. The origins of Mark First go back to 1955. So obviously, Brian looks very good for his age. And... <laughs> So, what I wanted to do is I really wanted to touch base on what's it like because really took them from knowing what was possible, but also them knowing that they didn't have the necessary skill sets or objectivity to move themselves or, you know, along in the journey of it. So that's the, that's the upshot. That's the framing of the whole thing. This is Brian Whipperman. Brian is from New York, like myself. So we're kind of like you know, brothers from different mothers. And um, I'm definitely taller and more charismatic. There's no question about it. Um, Potentially, but I think I look better, maybe. I don't know. It, it's, it, look, it's definitely who's more humble. We're, we're doing that. I think both of us would lose as far yeah, as. Yeah, I mean, you took the first shot and I immediately followed with one. So, yeah, God did not do, uh, we, we did not catch that lesson in, uh, no. in school. From, no, from no, we did, we did not. There, did we? For those that don't know, why don't you give a snapshot of of Mark first and sure. what what you were running into and what sparked this whole initiative? Great question, David. So I've been here just a little over four years, and for three and a half of those years, I would try to go out to the community and explain who we were and what we did. In those three and a half years, we certainly expanded and added business lines, but I was really struggling with, one, we didn't really have a lot of name notoriety in the community. We didn't have a lot of brand recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we did, people might have understood like this much of what we did. And so I kind of was struggling with, I don't have an 
elevator speech. I don't have anything that leads anybody to ask me a question, who are you, what do you do? The origins of Mark First, when it was created in 1955, actually was just called Mark. It was the McLean County Association of fill in the R word, a word we don't use for people with disabilities anymore, children. That name changed two times over history. It became Mark Center in like 1980. And then I think in 2007, it became Mark First. And today, our youngest client is 12 weeks old and our oldest is 83. And we provide a lifetime of services to kids, teens, and adults with and without developmental disabilities on a whole lot of fronts of different types of therapies and support systems. And so like, how do I explain that in any sort of like quick elevator speech, right? Like you said, we're from New York. Everything we do is 110 miles an hour. So, which has been a struggle being here in the Midwest. So, but how do you do it, right? Like how, how do I do that? And I was already struggling with the fact that the community didn't really know who we were. Or like I said, they had a small snapshot of what they thought we did. And so a really good friend of mine, a really good friend of yours named Matt George, who uh, at the time, so I met Matt. I actually worked for him for two years at Children's Home. He was the CEO and I was the vice president of education. And he was super supportive in my transition to this job. Matt uh, told me about this guy, this New York guy who, who he had taken a branding class with, right? And so um, our, our director of marketing, she and I were talking about how do we do all this? So we took the class. And I remember Matt told me it was going to be about week four when it really hit you in the class. And you, you made kind of the same comment to me when, when you decided whether, you know, we would meet kind of the standards of the class. And, but it really only took me to like week two that I was like, yeah, we're missing a big boat, but I'm not sure we know how to do it. And so after every class, Melanie and I had come back Monday to the office and I'd be like, I still don't have the answer. I know it's wrong what we're doing, but I don't have the answer. And she was like, yep, me too. And every week, I think we just got closer to like, we don't have the the capacity or the skill set to ask the right questions. What we know is we have something that's broken. And so I approached the board and said, I want to rebrand. And they were like, okay, go. Uh, and so that's when you and I talked about, you know, you doing this for us, right? Um and that journey, and I'm sure we'll probably get into it, that was a really cool journey for me personally um, because it really helped me answer the question that I couldn't answer in the nine-week class. So obviously, the first thing that we tackled was what was the story that wasn't being told? Mm -hmm. we, did, we, you know, we did what we normally do, which is we do a competitive review of the landscape going, okay, who are you up against? What's the noise level? We always, we always kind of take a real inventory. What's the noise level out there? Is there a lot of stuff and language that's just kind of being thrown and stuff like that? And what ended up happening is, and the whole goal of that exercise is to go, so what's the unique differentiator that, that really becomes the foundation upon which we could build everything? And really what it was in this particular case was it wasn't that more organizations, like you guys were already successful. You had a successful model and, mm -hmm. and a successful infrastructure, but it wasn't built to scale where it's like it could roll off the tongue and others can sort of become ambassadors, right? Right. And so... So we ended up really doing this homework exercise and found that it was it wasn't that more or, organizations were needed to help with regard to this cause, but it was organizations that had the ability to remove the barriers because there were lots of barriers to the help actually arriving to those who needed the help. That's where it was broken. And so context-wise, it wasn't just hey, let us tell you about us. And it was actually even bigger than that. It was like, wait a second, we need to be about the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. We need to be bigger. And when that was discovered, that's when, and looking, and like you said, from 12 weeks to 83 years old, that's when we were able to then look at that differentiator and then come up with the new name and move it from Mark First to actually the new name, which became lifelong access.
what I referenced before about the unique piece for me, you know, because every week in that class we talked about noise, right? And and there really isn't noise. There's competition, but there's so much need out there that there really isn't a lot of competition in terms of adding new clients today and getting people there was a much bigger story around access to care and a system that that sometimes not intentionally but a system that gets in the way of people having access to that care and that was the unique thing for me not only in the journey of the nine weeks because melanie and i kept focusing on the noise and and i don't really think at least for us in this particular niche, there was noise per se. Like to your point, yeah, you Googled and we found all these other people who do things similar to what we do. But one, there's nobody within probably a 200 mile radius who's seeing 12 weeks to 83. So we already had the unique in that regard. It was how do we talk about something greater than ourselves that really what you encapsulated wasn't something just for what was Mark first. You encapsulated something for an industry that most people in my industry probably haven't even realized yet. And that's that we have found a way to, to discuss and look at the system that's broken. And you helped us tell that in, in six words, mm. literally six words. So we went from a, a name and a tagline that was four words to six. And in that transformation, told an entire story. That was the part that Melanie and I, after all nine weeks, were banging our head against the wall because we're like, it's just there. But but we didn't know how. And it was just there and we didn't know how. And it was just there and we didn't know how. And like, um, I had a board member, I might be getting ahead of myself, but, but obviously the night that we announced this to the world was also our largest fundraiser. And I had a board member lean over to me and, and talk about how that whole video that you just did was worth every investment we made to do this. Like it was worth it because it really did in two minutes and 49 seconds completely encapsulate the story of where we started as an entity in 1955 to where we are today. And more importantly, what you left open, which is what I love, is we're actively trying to grow our business and expand our business. And you left the door open for us to take this and grow with it. Like the name, the whole thing can grow with us. It wasn't just, a, okay, here you are. Here's your package. Here's your bow for today. And you're good for today. It's here's your package and here's your bow. And you really never unwrap it because it just keeps going. And that's what I love so much about, about all of it. Totally, totally. Well, for, and for those for those who are tuning into this, the video that Brian is referring to, I'm going to show you right here. 1955 marked the year Elvis Presley signed his first recording contract. Disneyland opened its gates to the public in California, and the first Guinness Book of World Records was published. It's also the year a group of parents in Illinois took it upon themselves to do something unprecedented and remarkable. Set up a nonprofit organization that filled an important personal and growing need. One designed to help children facing certain challenges. This became what we know today as Mark First. Back then, there was no system for caring for children with intellectual or developmental disabilities or their families. Fast forward to today, and there are plenty of organizations with the mission to help children and people of all ages. Except there's a problem. That help often never arrives, or arrives too late, sometimes as long as a decade later, which raises the question, What's worse than no help at all? The anticipation of help that never arrives. And the most frustrating part? The greatest solutions are reduced to zero when those who need them most are denied access due to something none of us likes to acknowledge. The system is broken. And a broken system leaves us feeling broken. Not only those of us who needed help, but those who attempted to provide that help. 
which is why we recently underwent redefining our role to be bigger than the problem. How? By realizing that beyond helping, it's the removing of barriers that must be a core part of our message and mission. Ensuring attempts to help result in actual support, professional assistance, and the facilities we each deserve. Giving a voice to those not heard, providing assistance to those in need, and lending a hand in place of facing a closed door. And we recognize that life has phases, from birth through maturity. This is why we chose this new name, Lifelong Access. Because in every phase of life, it's never a question of if we helped. It's how we help that truly counts, and how much we helped. Because our clients never outgrow us, and we never outgrow them. Lifelong access. Services needed. Barriers removed. So what you just saw, literally, that's a matter of, that's after a few months of sifting through all the <laughs> layers of how do you frame the story? And I think this is a blind spot. Lots of organizations, whether they're in the nonprofit or profit, doesn't matter. That's not important. It's like if they could be providing a remarkable amount of value mm -hmm. and they don't know how to talk about it because they're either focusing too much on themselves and trying to get their pitch out there. And so it becomes a little bit of a, a, a self-absorbed discussion. Mm -hmm. But the way that we framed it, it's about, oh my God, there's an entire problem industry-wide that we are solving and we specialize in and excel at eliminating those things that stand in the way of the help needed arriving. That was that was so unique for me during all the conversations. When we made the decision, once once we kind of green lighted this project, all those times that you and I talked on, you know, Saturday morning or or you know late on a Tuesday night or whatever, what you pulled out of me was a story I was trying to tell without realizing I was trying to tell it. But I always kept coming back to you for you. And, and you're right. It's bigger than just us because it is an industry of people doing God's work every day. And they're fighting a system that puts barriers in the way of, to care. Again, I don't, I don't believe in my heart that's intentional, those barriers, but it's just the way the system is, right? It's just, in a lot of ways, it's a bureaucratic system. And bureaucratic systems sometimes tend to add layers to things. And, and make it harder for us to access whatever it is we need to access. And I just kept coming back to you going, dude, it's just, we just, we have kind of focused as an agency, as an entity to removing barriers to care. And I just kept saying that to you over and over and over <laughs> and it essentially turned into our tagline. And I just wasn't smart enough to connect the dots, but it was like, there are people that need services, right? Services needed, barriers removed, right? Like it just became a story within itself. And to your point, there are lots of agencies that can look at who we are now and what we're doing and say, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Because that's yeah. what they're doing too. You're right. This is bigger than us. This was systematic. Um, I'm just fortunate and blessed to be the one that has the name and the and the tagline, right? Because because we believed in it. And and my staff is just kind of going, wow, like that does tell a story you know and nobody likes change right so like the whole thing was like oh gosh change you know like we're, it's going to take some time to get used to i'm like i get it right it, it is but but it tells a much different story just within six words yeah i mean then the video really just right like that's just boom i mean because we did this at that fundraiser i've spent the last four years trying to tell that a lot of the times that same crowd as i asked them to help you know, give us money for something or a project or whatever, who we are and what we do. And in two minutes and 49 seconds, you did that. I think I talked for three to four minutes, showed a video of one piece of who we are and what we do. And then we raised a ton of money because of that. Um, because people were just like, 
they get it. Like they got it at that moment, right? Like it, it, it clicked. It's not just about a 12 week old kid. It's not just about an 83 year old adult with a developmental disability. It's about a lifetime of services that fill in that time. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and we provide, and this is what I've said to staff, right? I said, take the tagline out of it. Lifelong tells a story in one word. Access tells a story in one word. I said, so even if all you ever tell people is I work for lifelong access, you don't even, you can't even remember the tagline. It makes them one, it fills their head with something that at least gives them some bridge to who we are and what we do. But it certainly will then lead them to the question of who are you providing access to and within a lifetime. That leads them to naturally ask that question. So like the first time you presented lifelong access to me, I was like, this huge light bulb went off. And our VP of philanthropy was in the room with our marketing director. And she was like, at first she didn't get it. And then when I explained to her, like, think of like when we're talking to people in the community or as we grow into other communities, how just the title makes them question who you are, what you do. It makes it so much easier to elevate or pitch that. Totally. And it what, was the coolest transformation ever. Like after, ever. Yeah, totally. Totally. What I was particularly paying attention to was you had 600 people from around the community who had just spent the last hour and a half or so eating, drinking, and all that kind of stuff and talking with people that they've known from the community and to get them to finally kind of, yeah, hey, stop talking. Stop talking. We're, we're about to unveil something that's going to be changing. Yep the future when that video started you could hear a pin drop yep they were yep. glued they were glued and that that was like i was like I'm, I'm just watching the room i'm going and then people when it was done they were like Phew. so yeah it was yeah special. and that, that's why like during other times i wasn't overly concerned with them getting totally silent because yeah. i knew there was a window there and I knew where we needed that window. And once that video started, I knew it was going to be, they, they all were just so captivated in the moment. Um, you know, when you start a video talking about 1955 and Disney World and Elvis Presley, you know, again, it's an older crowd, right? It's all adults. You immediately pull some instant memory. Guinness Book of World Records, right? Those were the three things we identified about 1955. All of those trigger thought and emotion everybody in that crowd's had. So they were yeah. immediately drawn back in. Yeah. So, like, I, you listen, I, I've seen a few of the videos you've done. Obviously, you shared them in that class. I got to tell you, dude, this one has just got to be the best you've done. You've done thousands of these rebrands over your career, right? And you are as world-renowned at this as anybody I've ever met. I mean, you are the who's who in this. Dude, this has got to be your best one. Like, I know it just has to be your best one. It's got to be. It has to be. It has yeah. to be. Actually, your one in Philly about uh, – your one in Philly was really good, too. Yeah. No, so. but it's no, – I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, it, look, it was, it was very – I remember even explaining to you. I remember even saying – because you're like, so how does this video thing work? I said, well, first, the script. We get the mm -hmm. word. We get the story right. Yep. Then, you know, and that's based after, you know, after the, after all the stuff is done, the, the, the story's done, the narrative is done, the differentiators, the design, the logo, the, the, all the various things. Okay, we had all these. Now, we had the ingredients to make the meal. The meal is the video, right? It's like, okay, yeah. we got all the raw ingredients. It's all, it's all there. Great. And now, so it's like, okay, we get the narrative. And then I say, after the narrative, now I'm, I said, I'm going to find the perfect voice, right? I'm going to find the individual who's got, and so we, we found a woman who did it right, did it great. And that itself is a trick because these voiceover artists, many of them are trained to deliver a perfect delivery, but it's not natural. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, it sort of talks in, and hi, and this is da 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 da
sonic backdrop? What's the music that's going to set the tone? And that gave it room to breathe. And then we were finally able to bring the animation into play to really fully, you know, allow all of the components to come to life. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a, I think it's a, a masterwork in telling a story the right way. And here's another little layer that I don't think everybody is aware of. Because things change so much, meaning ages, people, cultures, communities, we wanted it to be something that anyone could connect with, no matter where it was, no matter what community it went into, no matter who or what and what age or anything of that nature, we wanted it something that would not have a built-in expiration date, outdated prematurely. So all of those considerations went into the creation of this. For everybody who's going to be watching this, David, right? Like, so, so we unveiled this at a fundraiser, and I'm sure that of all the tons of people who are going to watch this, they've been to millions of fundraisers in their life. What I love most about the script, right? Most people leave a fundraiser and they don't really, because they were asked by somebody who it's, you know, it's a cause that's important to them and they go on behalf of. So what, one, of the, one of the things that David had recommended we do was we created our own notebook as a giveaway. But one of the other things we did with that notebook was we took that story. And so everybody who left, left with the story. So it was like, well, why were you there? Who is this lifelong access guys? You know, like, well, let me tell you the story because now when it's sitting on someone's desk, who right. was here, who was a, a banker or a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, and sitting on their desk and someone asks what it's about, they can take the minute and a half to read that and say, here you go. Like, this is what they're trying to do. Yeah. And so David was just, you were just so super instrumental in not only just saying, hey, here's a name. Here's a logo. Here's some color to it. Here's what it is. It was so much bigger than that. I mean, like within two days, the front doors in our building were changed with the new logo. Like, you know, like the the website was launched that night, a brand new website. You know, like, yeah. I mean, we just we had gear for staff. We had our own beer. David's got a beer with our with our logo on it. Like, yeah, it's, it, this is really cool, right? I was just with that guy this afternoon for, for, for lunch. I mean, like, you know, it was bigger. David made sure that it wasn't just a name. David, you, I'm, I'm talking to you without talking to you. I'm talking to the audience at this point, dude. It was, it was bigger than a name. It was, it was to the point that what you said before, it was a mission that's so much greater than even just our entity. It's just the better part of humanity that people are trying to do, whether they're in hospitals or nonprofits or whatever. They're trying to take care of people who need care. And there are things that get in the way to that care. You really made it a special journey for us, not just for me, but for the board, uh, for Melanie, for the whole team. It was, a, it was a special, unique journey that I never want to have to change names again, but I'd happily do it again. Because yeah. one, you made it easy. You really listened to not just to what we said, but to the meaning that maybe we didn't realize was in our words, which goes back to barriers removed. Because I just sat there like and whined about it for nine weeks in a Saturday class. And then for like the first five Zoom calls, I just kept saying, well, dude, we just removed barriers to care. I don't know how to, I don't know how to get to that. It's all my tech. They do God's work. They remove barriers to care. And you're just like, okay, like <laughs> hearing you. I just never saw it. Right. Because uh, someone said to me the other day, sometimes uh, you can't see the, you can't see the label from inside the jar. Right. right. Like, you know, like you just, you're so far into it and, and you or, just, or, all or you can, it. Or you can see it, but but getting your arm out of the top of the jar and actually being able to touch the front, of the, that's the trickier part. That's the trickier you know part. what that that's a that's a great point, right? And like so, I knew enough to know I had to grab the label. I just couldn't <laughs> grab it, and and uh, so yeah, you know, it was an amazing journey. It wasn't a difficult journey. You made it a really easy journey. Um, obviously, the journey is still in the process for us, right? Because now there's like the legal side of changing your name, which, yeah, that's, you know, that is what it is. It brings on its own questions and, and whatever, but we're doing it and doing it in the right phases and stuff. But uh, you really did 
make that part of it easy. And I, and I know our marketing director, Melanie, absolutely loves the brand manual. Like, it's like, look, it's here in black and white. These are the only things you can do. These are the only fonts, the only setups, the only stack decks. The only, I'm like, great. You don't even have to write one. This is awesome. It's just there. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was super great. Super That's great. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. No, man, I appreciate that. I mean, it was it, it was a lot of fun. When I saw people looking at it, like they love the colors. They, it feels alive. It didn't feel, it didn't feel, you know, the, the prior identity, it felt, more, it felt more contained. It felt more restricted. Mm -hmm. And this feels alive. It's like, oh my God, it feels like it's just bursting with life. Yep. You know? And Agreed. so that, that's, that's the other part too. Yeah, I mean, there, there is, there's so much of a story just in the logo, right? Just in the circle, right? Like, you know, um, I had an all staff last week, two of them, uh, to make sure we can get as many people to it. And somebody asked about, like, what does the circle mean? And, you know, I jokingly started singing the circle of life from Lion King. But I said, you know, there's 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 it just it's so many things for us that talks about lifelong. Um, and. It actually wasn't until I watched, because I played the video for both groups when I did my all staff last week. It wasn't until the first time that I even noticed. Actually, it was the second time I noticed. It was the first time I said it aloud. The first time I noticed the stairs at the end that kind of created this lifelong trail from beginning to end. I said it to my wife that night during the video. I said, oh, my goodness. I didn't even. And I had watched the video, I don't know, 20 times, right? Maybe, maybe more what the stairs symbolized and then again i said it to staff like understand like there's our 12 week old and there's our 83 year old and where the steps in between all of it and there were so many of those symbols dropped in right like they talk about all those things like when you're in the movies i, I forgot what like you know they show you the popcorn or they show you the soda or whatever those what do they call those uh subliminal subliminal, subliminal yeah, yeah. message yeah like like you had those in there and like they caught me. It took me like 25 hours before. I was like, there's one. Oh, wait, wait, there's one. Oh, oh, there's one. Like, so no, it was, uh, people are still talking about it in our community. Um, love it. Love it. People are talking about how they love the name, how they love the tagline, how they love the story, how they love all of it. Like, it's just been, the the outpour has been incredible. It's been incredible. Awesome. Feedback's been awesome. incredible. I love it. I love it. Well, that's wonderful. Well, that's obviously what we all wanted. And I'm thrilled that we got there. And it was great, man. Because I always know when I haven't gotten to the bottom of the barrel. I got a few more questions for you. And you made yourself available. And we would go there and boom, 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 boom. We kept on. And I know when I gotten everything I need to craft what we need to do. And so that was great. So I love this. I love the success. I love the success of it. And I love the response that it's getting. And all I can say, dude, is couldn't have done it without you. Well, I, I was just about to say the same thing in the other because you tied it together really, really nicely. So I would highly encourage people, like if you know you're stuck and you can't get yourself beyond it, David's the answer for that. He's going to get you unstuck and get you on the right path. So Love it, man. Love thanks, it. brother. I appreciate all you did for us, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. You as well. You as well. Thank you. If you have an organization or company that needs a rebrand, let's sit down, have a discovery session and see what you're leaving on the table, what opportunities are not being seized fully, and what you need to do to reframe the narrative so that people who can benefit from what you're providing can really come to the right conclusion because nobody will come to a new conclusion with old information. Thanks for tuning in. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe.